Hi and thank you for watching this video. I wanted to do a quick update with regards to the previous video in which I stated that there may be a 7 day warning before the Purim date arrives. Something that the Lord laid on my heart was the fact that even though Noah's timeline contains a 40 day period, it does not align with the time pattern of Jesus and Jonah that I pointed out in the previous video and which would seem to apply to the period of time that we currently find ourselves in. I also believe that the sign of Jonah that was promised to Israel as the only sign that would be given to them, which is also the obvious sign of being in the belly of the whale for a three day period, is what could apply and serve as a warning sign to those who are watching for our Lord's return. Previously, I pointed out how Jesus mentioned in Matthew aspects that would be associated with the beginning of sorrows. He points out wars and rumors of wars between nations that will rise against each other. And this would also seem to be specifically pointed out for us as something to watch, given the emphasis that is placed on this aspect which is mentioned twice in the following passage. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences, and earthquakes in divers places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. When we consider what is currently happening in Syria, this would seem to exactly fit the description that Jesus gave us in Matthew, and where we can now expect a situation to arrive where great destruction will come about as a result. There are several nations involved in this conflict who are currently rising against each other, all in a single country, something that we have never seen before. The main players are Syria, Turkey, Russia, Iran, the US, Israel, the Kurds, and other NATO nations that are also involved. If we apply the sign of Jonah to this situation that is forming before us, we could expect to see some developments with regards to this war in Syria. To serve as a warning for those who are watching in the three days leading up to Purim, if Purim is the date on which sudden destruction and an escape is expected. I could be wrong, but I believe it is very possible for the Isaiah 17 prophecy regarding the destruction of Damascus to be fulfilled in the three days leading up to Purim. If this is indeed the case, then I would plead with all those who believe that our Heavenly Father would want His purchased possession to suffer at the hands of the enemy during the tribulation, to carefully reconsider your beliefs with regards to the pre-tribulation rapture. Because all of these events that are now happening are pointing to the upcoming escape that 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 3 speaks about. You want to be part of that escape, and part of those who will be hidden in the chambers that our Heavenly Father had prepared for us, who have been justified, sanctified, and glorified by the blood of His Son. For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. Come, my people, enter thou into thy chambers, and shut thy doors about thee. Hide thyself, as it were, for a little moment, until the indignation be overpassed. Those who miss the escape will remain behind in outer darkness where they will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The time is so short, brothers and sisters, and I plead with you not to close your heart to our Heavenly Father's love for you. He is not a sadist who desires to throw his own family under the oncoming bus, which will be driven by Satan. If you remain behind, you are going to be very disappointed and angry at yourself for passing up this opportunity and discovering that what you believed was only part of an understanding which you did not fully grasp because you never considered how the harvest and temple models apply to the resurrection of the dead. You will also discover that what you expected to encounter during the tribulation is in fact far worse than anything you could have ever imagined. Coming back to the sign of Jonah. As I have shown you in previous videos, our enemy knows when his time will come and has shown it to us in plain sight. And we have now seen how events have begun to play out just as they have been shown to us for many years now. In this scene from the iPad Go To animation, we see how once the word Brexit or peace is said, it is followed by markets plunging. Now I ask you, is this not what is currently happening? 
Did the markets not experience a severe crash or collapse in the days following the announcement of the deal of the century, which came only three days before Brexit? Next, and going by what the enemy shows us, will be war coverage that ends in an attack that will destroy Mecca. These events, especially the war coverage, are connected to another scene in this animation, which in turn is connected to the sign of Jonah, and I will show you why. In this scene we see a number of tanks or a war machine approaching, with a girl running towards them waving a peace flag. I have already shown in this video why I believe that this girl represents Angelina Jolie, and recently we have also seen how she is drawing closer to the situation in this article. I believe she will step into her role as peace ambassador once a serious incident occurs to prevent further escalation. Her efforts, however, is shown to be interrupted by the resurrection of the dead at a time when there is a celebration or a party. These connections, given the 40 days that we have been shown in the Word of God that follows the saying of peace and safety, very strongly points to Purim this year being the party that is being referred to and which is called the Night of Israel's Pleasure in Isaiah 21. It starts on the evening of March 9th and ends at sundown in Jerusalem on March 10th. So how are these events connected to the sign of Jonah? If you carefully look at the environment in which this scene plays out, you will notice that it would seem to be within the belly of a whale carcass, and therefore associated with the sign of Jonah. The period of time that is associated with being inside the whale from the perspective of God's word is three days and three nights. And could it be then that these events will occur in the three days leading up to Purim? Could it be that the current conflict in Syria could be brought to a point where Isaiah 17 is fulfilled within the three days before the escape of those who are watching and being plucked away from the coming destruction? I have set thee for a tower and a fortress among my people, that thou mayest know and try their way. They are all grievous revolters walking with slanders. They are brass and iron. They are all corruptors. The bellows are burned. The lead is consumed of the fire. The founder melteth in vain, for the wicked are not plucked away. What is even more astounding is that if this plays out as shown to us, then it is clear that our enemy has known the day and the hour of his time for a long time and has shown it to us in plain sight since 2012. In light of this, and if this continues to play out as shown to us, it must be quite embarrassing for those who still insist that it is impossible to know the day on which we will escape the destruction that will come over the world. Surely our Heavenly Father will reveal these secrets to those that belong to Him and who search Him out, especially in light of the fact that He previously even revealed these secrets to a king that did not know Him. But there is a God in heaven that revealeth secrets, and maketh known to the king Nebuchadnezzar what shall be in the latter days. Thy dream and the visions of thy head upon thy bed are these. As for thee, O king, thy thoughts came into thy mind upon thy bed, what should come to pass hereafter? And he that revealeth secrets maketh known to thee what shall come to pass. It is the glory of God to conceal a thing, but the honor of kings is to search out a matter. Those who lack a desire for being in the presence of our Heavenly Father will be happy to focus on a single verse in the Bible, that will not be read in context with the rest of Scripture, and that will conclude the matter for them, keeping them from applying any further effort to discovering the hidden treasures that our Heavenly Father had hid for us in His Word. In fact, many Christians will consider those who look for the day on which we will meet our Redeemer in the air as foolish or worthy of scorn. I have often also heard that those who look for the day make Christians look foolish in the eyes of the world, when the dates come and go with nothing happening. What is more important, having a desire for being with the Lord, or being respected by the world? When I receive scorn and ridicule, then I know I am right where I am supposed to be, even if that scorn comes from fellow Christians, because God's word states that He chose that which the world would consider foolish. But God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise, and God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. 
I certainly would prefer being selected by God for being foolish in the eyes of the world than to earn the world's respect. Consider this carefully in the days ahead of us. I may be wrong about this, as my understanding has often been wrong. However, over the past two months, we have seen how what I have said in advance about what would happen with regards to the deal of the century, Brexit and the economy crashing, have happened just as I have stated, and I believe the other events that I have pointed out will also happen as I have stated, and are backed up by the patterns that are shown to us in the Word of God, and also going by what we are shown in the plans of our enemy, which pretty much ties in with what God's Word is saying. I am of the opinion that as in the days of Noah, our Heavenly Father will let His people know before the time to be ready for their escape. Given that Jesus said that the sign of Jonah would be the only sign that would be given to Israel, we can expect that there may be a three-day period associated with it that will be a clear signal to those who are sober and who are in the light, and who will not be caught by surprise when this day arrives. Please keep your eyes on the window of time between March 6th and March 9th, as this is when we could receive the signal that confirms our understanding regarding the escape. If nothing happens, then once again we look foolish, but we continue to search. But should this weekend turn out, as now discussed, then we are going to be very sure of what will follow on Purim. If you have not seen the other videos published before this one, I have provided links in the description, as they are very important for you to understand what I'm talking about in this video, if this is the first one you've watched. I ask you to please share these videos with others, because this may be the final opportunity we have to prepare people to meet their Maker while they are still alive. And for those who help to share this, may our Heavenly Father shower His favor and blessings upon you for standing up for Him, and for your love for those who have been blinded by the enemy. If important events happen in the days before us, I will upload short videos to point them out. May our Heavenly Father bless you and keep you. May He make His face shine upon you and give you peace that transcends all understanding. Until next time, or until we meet in the air, God bless.